there is one question I really wanted to ask you. It says even on the cover of the book, gene therapy. Uh, why do you call it gene therapy? So we look to the definition of what hyperbaric oxygen therapy is. It was defined as a treatment for a certain list of diagnoses. Now, it's just backward because that list, as it turns out, is different in the United States, Russia, China, Japan, etc. cetera. And, and certain was determined by a little group of doctors. So in other words, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is what we say it is. It's good for this list of diagnoses that we say it's good for. Well, and so we have this list of what now, 15 or 16 diagnoses. And, and I experienced this from the very start, 1986, when we opened the hyperbaric unit in this little community hospital up on the border of Louisiana and Mississippi, right on the, on the edge of the Honey Island Swamp, uh, this little community hospital. And I go around to the doctors and, oh yes, uh, Dr. Harsh, we just uh, opened the hyperbaric unit here. I'm one of the emergency medicine physicians and so on. And they say, oh, yeah, what's that good for? And I show them the list. And now just listen to these diagnoses. Decompression sickness, air embolism, carbon monoxide poisoning with or without cyanide poisoning, chronic bone infections. And that's my wife, partner, everything. everything. Uh, <laughs> nice the reason that you, this, where this is, is and where I am is is due to her. And, but, but to continue, you know, chronic bone infection, compromised flaps and grafts, thermal burns, and, and the list goes on. And the doctors look at these diagnoses and it's like carbon monoxide and a chronic bone infection. How is that connected? I mean, and they finally say, okay, if you say so. And then they turn around and go the other way. There is <clears throat> seemingly no connection between those diagnoses. But in fact, there is. We're not treating the diagnoses, we're treating the underlying pathophysiology, the disease processes, and number one of which is inflammation in so many of these. But, but that was not understood. And as a result, the medical profession has never been able to accept this. So, you know, what finally happened, if you look at all of the diseases, hyperbaric oxygen has had success or been applied to over its 363 year history. They are mostly wounding conditions and inflammatory conditions. And if we just take the wounding conditions for a moment and 80% of reimbursed hyperbaric medicine practiced in the United States and all the hospital and wound care centers, 80% of it is due to two chronic conditions, diabetic foot wounds and radiation injured tissue. Well, what we do is heal these wounds with a daily exposure to increased pressure and oxygen. Eventually the patients grow new tissue. Well, how do you grow new tissue? If you're stimulating non-healing tissue to grow new tissue, you have to stimulate the cells to multiply and divide. To do that, you have to go through the nucleus. You've got to do something to make the cell start to reproduce its DNA, the nucleus, the cell divide, et cetera, which means that we have to be doing something with our chromosomes and DNA. The concept of gene therapy, if you will, and that rise in pressure and oxygen stimulating our DNA was proposed by some plastic surgeons in 1997 who were doing wound experiments on rabbits where they clamp the artery to the rabbit ear, rabbit gets an ulcer at the end of it, and they were putting growth factors on it and finding that you grew new tissue. But they also exposed some of the rabbits to hyperbaric oxygen and also grew tissue. Well, where are the hormones acting? They're acting on the chromosomes. Where was the hyperbaric oxygen acting? It had to be doing the same thing. But the whole argument for it was in the title, hyperbaric oxygen, alters the ischemic oxygen capacitance of tissue. Where is DNA signaling in that? The, the article was just ignored. But over the next 15 years or 11 years, somewhere in there, a series of experiments were done that targeted individual genes and their products with hyperbaric oxygen. 
and all of these were positive. And finally, when molecular biochemical techniques caught up, and this goes to your answer or question, and the answer to your question, where you could do PCR analysis and mass gene array analyses, they did an experiment on human cells, single hyperbaric treatment, turned on over 40% of all the protein coding genes in our 46 chromosomes, which were 8,101 of the 19,000 genes. And the largest clusters turned on were the growth and repair hormone genes and the anti-inflammatory genes. And the largest clusters turned on were the ones that caused inflammation and cell death. So every hyperbaric treatment was stimulating tissue growth, inhibiting inflammation, and turning off cell death in areas of damage. Ergo, hyperbaric oxygen is a gene therapy, and it's acting at the epigenetic level. So basically, we knew from 363 years ago that it's quite beneficial in the conditions of wounds and inflammation. And then many, many yes. years later, after that, we learned that this was because it acted directly on the genes that were responsible for yes. healing, repair, and inflammation. Yes, so we have the most elegant, broad-based, wide-ranging, comprehensive gene therapy known to man. And when you think about it, it's, it's depending on your belief, either the way we were created or deeply embedded in our evolution. If, if, if you believe in evolution and we came out of the oceans, you look at sea life. They are adapted and live at different levels mm -hmm. according to the pressure of seawater. And so we have embedded in our genes the ability for our genes to respond to changes in pressure. And the same with oxygen.